So, do you know? No. Good. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> So you know how JavaScript has now these primitives like map and set and weak map and all these like little nice data structures to, to build things? Yes. I wanted to build something with a weak map. Yes, and weak maps are great. They're underused, but great. We should say like you know, weak maps are a way of associating an object with another object. And see, um, you already said that, and this is where I was already wrong, because I just wanted to have strings mapping to objects. My, my, my concept was, I just have a list of keys, strings, you know, keys, strings, Some strings. And, I, and I want to map them to objects, but I wanted to allow these objects to get garbage collected if necessary, which is the purpose of a weak map. You can have them in this map, but it doesn't right. prevent garbage collection. So we have this. Uh, so I should say that one of the good use cases for this is like we, we used to put like if you wanted some data associated with a DOM node, say mm -hmm. we used to use like expandos. We used to just like you yeah. put DOM node dot underscore some data. We got data attributes in the end, but um, no. what if you wanted to be objects or something? And a weak map's a great way of saying this object that I don't really want to edit because I don't own its like, yeah. prototype. I want to associate with this set of data I do own. Yeah, and then. So then if that DOM node goes out of reference because it's like removed and you know nothing's got access to it, then your object as well can be garbage collected if there's no reference to it. Ah, so this is where I was wrong. It's not about the values not being garbage collected, but the keys not being garbage collected. Yes. So you get to you get to keep your access, your ability to access the value as long as you have the key. And that's why strings don't work. Yes, because it's a well, and, and it's, it's, yeah. tr it's true for numbers as well. It's true for all primitives. Yes, you need to have. All, always it, I exist. found out that you need to have an object. I didn't understand why, but I guess this is where my mental model of the weak map was wrong because I thought the keys are just keys, but the values could get garbage collected even if they're still in the map. But it's the keys that still can get garbage collected yes. even if they're in use in the weak map. And you use your key to unlock the the door to get access to the value. You see, oh, so but see, you gave me the mnemonic. The mnemonic, there you go. Amazing. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, we got. Um, and one of the things that I've, I've always been baffled by is like weak set. Yeah. So like, one thing that neither weak map nor weak set have. So I guess it, just explain the weak map is a thing. You know, the keys can get garbage collected. Great. Excellent. Correct. Yes, that's true. That's true. Um, and the set is just a set. The no thing can be in there twice, but also doesn't prevent garbage collection. Yep. It's a map but, with only keys. But neither of them are iterable. Right. Because that would expose garbage collection. Yeah. And that and that's a a rule of the web for reasons I don't fully understand, but it is a rule that we don't want to expose that for some reason. Do you, do you have a use case for weak set? No. So I, I, I think I figured it out. Have you ever used a, a, a weak map where you know the key is an object? I think I've used a weak map, really, so I know. Have you not? I, well, oh, they're great, but, they, but, but where <laughs> the value is true. So I, Which is a common practice to emulate a set. <laughs> Exactly, and I had this, and I and this is because I've been thinking for ages, like oh, weak set, it's useless. And I had a piece of code where I needed to, uh, I needed to tag uh, a request uh, object in that, mm -hmm. like I've dealt with this request object, or I've dealt with this re response, or I wanted, I wanted to say, um, I, I wanted to say I've had this is from the, if it was a response, I wanted to say this is from the cache, and I started mm. with just using expando underscore from cache equals true, and then TypeScript complained. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to do this properly. OK. Um, oh. So I ended up with a weak map where the value was true. And I stood back and thought, no, this is not a weak map. This is a weak set. I might actually have to use this, because my current approach to what you just said, basically marking elements as having been processed already, mm -hmm. is um, the expander thing. But instead of using underscore something, I use symbols, because those are guaranteed not to clash. So it feels. Safe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one is arguably better. Right, because you're, you're keeping the separation of data. Yeah. And at some point, like the symbol thing, or it's possible that TypeScript will start complaining about yeah, that. Yeah, and well I just augment like... the type in TypeScript and say, like, this thing is now on this type. Right, OK. <laughs> Which is what I did as well, and I wanted to not do that. And yeah, and so th that's the thing. If you want oh, some associated piece of data, there you I, go. I will try to refactor that. that could, I learned something today. Yep. I've nice. become a better web developer. Although, to be honest, that is probably something that I would expect 
to be in React somewhere, or like any framework. Because I feel ev every framework it has some kind of upgrading mechanism. Like you have DOM, and you need to, what did we call it? Hydrate it. Yes. Or do any kind of processing on DOM. So like we are now aware that this is not only DOM, but this is tied to a, a React component, for example. Yep. This is where this would come into play. So th this is something that um, HyperHTML uses. Oh. So we, we were talking about this in, in the last episode. If you've got like a sort of um, uh, HyperHTML calls it a wire, but it's kind of like a partial. Um, so you, you know you've got a list element, and you, you you've got something to create list items from like an object. Mm -hmm. uh, HyperHTML wants you to use a, an object, you know, give it an object that it will associate that set of data with. Oh, uh, and so nice. usually that will be an object you have that represents the array of things. Uh, so that means that if stuff like um, you know when you go in and, and it's how you know how it knows you're modifying an existing list. Rather Smart. than and, yeah, use this, use a weak map, and it means it doesn't leak memory because as soon as your object goes out of reference, so does HyperHTML's cache. So I think yeah, it's really it's like they're a little bit of the unsung heroes of the JavaScript, the ECMAScript. What is it? I, is it this it's ECMAScript, but sometimes it's JavaScript. <laughs> Do you get dragged in by people's accents as yeah. well? Google being in San Francisco, whenever we go out there, I find one weekend I'm like, yeah, yeah, ah, ah. is that like? I'm like totally into this. Totally there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what accent I was trying to do there. It sort of it was, went. You have enough uh, people that can tell the accents apart. It's like it was totally American.